Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in this evening for the 2019-2020 Athletic Banquet. When I first came to Bryn Mawr, I didn't quite know what to expect. After deciding to attend a historically women's college, I had no idea what I was getting myself into, which I'm sure many of you can relate to. But I soon learned that this would be one of the best and most rewarding decisions I've made thus far. As Bremar athletes, we are not only given the opportunity to further our education at an academically rigorous institution or play the sports we love at a higher level, but also to build a community of smart, strong, and determined individuals continuing the work of those who came before us and leaving a legacy behind for those who will follow after us. Throughout my four years here, I've seen us do just that. Each and every game, match, meet, regardless of the opponent, we continue to fight to the very end, standing strong in who we are and our vision. This year in particular was one of triumph, a year that will forever be remembered for all that we've accomplished, the year in which Bremer Athletics had arrived. This year was filled with victory, number of firsts, celebration, and camaraderie unlike any other. For the first time in program history, Bryn Mawr Field Hockey competed in conference playoffs, finishing their season 14-4 overall and 7-3 and in conference, with two of their players, senior Mary Cugini and junior Sarah Roulat, receiving both first team all-conference and National Field Hockey Coaches Association all-region honors. To top it off, Coach Victor Brady was named Coach of the Year, with 14 Owls earning their way onto the 2019 ZAG NFHCA Division III National Academic Squad, which included the entire senior class. Bremar Soccer also made history this season, gaining a victory over assignments for the first time in program history, finishing their season tying the most program wins in a season. Volleyball finished the year with one of their best performances this season against their sinus as the last two sets ended 25 to 19 and 25 to 20, along with senior Jess DeJoey ending her career with a three kill performance. Cross country ended their season with a stellar performance at the NCAA Mid East Regional as senior Anna Kyle finished 66th place overall, leading Bremer to a top 30 finish. Our winter athletes would keep the momentum going as swim continued to break records throughout conference championships, setting a new school record in both the 400 medley relay and the 200 free relay. Bremer basketball celebrated a historic moment this season with senior Helena Martin as she scored her 1,000th career point against Gettysburg. Along with the team's unforgettable performance against Trico rival Swarthmore, ending the game 62 to 55. Indoor track wrapped up their season with yet another historic performance for Bryn Mawr, as Jenica Terry and Cass Wojcik earned individual gold at Centennial Conference Indoor Championships. Our spring sports, although their seasons were cut short, kept the ball rolling until their very last performance. Crew ended their fall season with a remarkable performance at the Schuylkill Regatta with the Varsity 8 finishing in 12th place out of 38, just two seconds behind Yukon Seaboat. The Novice 8 finishing in the top 10, and the Varsity 4 would beat out Cabrini, Susquehanna, Wheaton, and the Uovo. Bremer Lacrosse set a program record with six straight wins, as first year Sloan Johnson was named Centennial Conference Offensive Player of the Week and became the second leading scorer in Centennial Conference this season. Tennis had a strong start in the fall with a 2 and one record, beating Shippensburg and Arcadia. Outdoor track was no different. Ending the year with sophomore Jenica Terry taking first place in the hurdles at the Swarthmore final, along with four new personal records from Anna Kyle, Jenica Terry, Julie Gonzalez, and Cass Wojcik. Finally, 
badminton wrapped up their season, taking second and third place in the women's doubles rookies division at the main line doubles tournament. Can we just take a moment to celebrate all that we've accomplished this year? Go ahead, pause this video, and give yourself a hand. Okay, now that we're back, throughout all the historic performances and hard-earned victories, there is something that stuck out a little bit more for me this year. Our sense of community and support for one another. This year we had one of the most heavily attended homecoming weekends in the past four years, as we thought of a new way to get the broader Bremar community involved. We established a new partnership with Unite For Her, raising $2,500 for women diagnosed with breast or ovarian cancer. Two of our own, Elena Pion and Zaina Moen, started a club called United to provide support for POC athletes and their allies here at Bryn Mawr. In the face of conflict, we rallied alongside one another opening the door for constructive conversation about our department's history and made new connections with other groups on campus, like Bacasso and Ajoyo, to name a few. Most importantly, our support for one another through these trying and uncertain times, not even a pandemic can stop us. I love waking up every morning and seeing the workout Courtney has for us each day and listening to her Motivational Monday videos our team meetings on Zoom, learning about everyone's workout tips, and our pass it along challenges. These are things that make us who we truly are, smart, strong, Bren Mar. This pandemic will, not, will only propel us forward, strengthening our bonds with one another and help us achieve our goals in the future. I feel extremely blessed and honored to have had the opportunity to be your SAC president this year. I've enjoyed working alongside you all in pursuit of your goals and will forever hold on to the memories and connections I've gained from my time here. I want to leave you with this. As you continue to navigate your way through these tough times, remember that we are stronger together and that you are never alone. Brenmar is your home. Thank you. Before I sign off, I have the pleasure of announcing this year's Sportsmanship Award recipient. This year's award recipient is Lexi Bucci. Congratulations, Lexi. Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to be part of the Athletic Banquet this year. Um, I want to uh, note what an amazing year of accomplishment the academic year 1920 was for our athletes and I thought about celebrating those individual accomplishments but when I thought back about this year what I want to celebrate is your togetherness. Your togetherness on the field um, in adversity and challenge but also in those joyous moments of victory. Your togetherness as you supported other sports and other programs. It was amazing to be at games and see so many other athletes there. Um, your togetherness outside of athletics, whether it was academic uh, moments, uh, co-curricular activities, uh, if, if you were there and it was happening, you had your athletes with you. Um, and then finally, I just want to celebrate your togetherness around your friendship and the ways in which you connect with each other while you're here on campus. But I see it even in uh, this moment when we are not together and the ways that you continue to connect with one another uh, on social media um, and, and the various ways that people of your generation do that. As I uh, think about this past uh, year in athletics, I also want to note some changes that have, are meaningful to me. Um, the first is that uh, I think we're sporting some great attitude. It used to be when we would play schools like Hopkins or Gettysburg, um, we talked about that with a little bit of trepidation um, and concern. And now when I hear you talk about um, playing those teams or whatever team is on top, um, the attitude is bring it, we're ready. And I love that attitude. 
Another change um, is a change for me when I go to games and we fall behind. I'm not nervous anymore um, because I know that you have the confidence and the skills and that you're ready to come back um, from those setbacks. And uh, so I I'm sort of there with you and I I'm confident that you're gonna prevail. Um, I'm also noting that teams no longer um, can look past us. It used to be that uh, teams would not prepare for Bryn Mawr, right? They were thinking about that game after us, that race after us, and now uh, they are um, having to spend a lot of time um, thinking about us, and that's really exciting. And then the final change that I want to note is that uh, I am now putting all uh, playoffs and championships, uh, conference championships on my calendar because I'm confident that uh, we have a shot at being there and if we're there, I don't want to miss it. Um, and that wasn't the case a few years ago and it's a really amazing change to see. And I hope that you seniors um, really notice these changes because that's you, that's your leadership. You are the ones that helped us uh, bring us to where we are today. And we wouldn't be here without you. I want to end with some thank yous. First of all, I want to thank Kathy, uh, our coaches, and all of our staff for the many, many ways that you support our athletes, our larger student population, and the college itself. Your passion and love of your work is evident in the way that you show up every day. Um, and I want to thank you for that dedication and for what you've done for the college. And I really want to thank the student athletes. Uh, you are an amazing group. You make Bryn Mawr a better institution and we are so lucky to have you as part of our community. Um, as I do at every athletic banquet, I end by um, invoking Courtney um, and saying to you, championships seasons begin now. Um, so do your summer training, work hard, um, and know that uh, we are cheering for you every step of the way. Uh, I miss you. I love you. Uh, I can't wait until you're back on campus. It is lonely here without you. Um, but please know that you're in my heart, and I just want to once again say congratulations um, to all of our scholar athletes on an amazing year. Hello everyone, I hope you are all hanging in there during these chaotic times. I'm Tim Hart, the Faculty Rep Athletic Representative or FAR at Bryn Mawr, and every year I have the honor of acknowledging the success of Bryn Mawr's athletes in the classroom. As you can see, this virtual evening, we are celebrating in a slightly new way the athletic and academic achievements of our Bryn Mawr student athletes. Their academic prowess is accentuated by their representation on the Centennial Conference and Mid-Atlantic Rowing Conference honor rolls. To be named to the academic honor roll, a student athlete must be a sophomore, junior, or senior, a starter or key reserve on her team, and carry a 3.40 cumulative grade point average or higher. In total, 63 Bryn Mawr student athletes were named 92 times to the fall, winter, and spring academic honor rolls. Additionally, Bryn Mawr's cross-country field hockey, lacrosse, soccer, swimming, and volleyball teams were named to their respective coaches' associations' academic honor lists. This year, we had four students who were named academic all centennial for earning spots on both academic honor roll and all conference teams. Congratulations goes out to Sarah Rollett and Mary Sugini from field hockey, as well as Jenica, Terry, and Cass Wojcik uh, from track and field. And congratulations, of course, goes out to all of the athletes on your academic success this year. We look forward to watching you thrive academically in the upcoming year at Bryn Mawr, and we're looking forward to seeing Bryn Mawr Athletics finally get back to business once this long pandemic is over. So long, folks. Brimmar Cross Country had a great 2019 season. Cross Country officially started in August with preseason. During preseason, the training is more intense, with a couple of workout sessions taking place each day. 
and with the added factor of the heat and the humidity. But all of the hard work during that time brought us really close as a team. We welcomed lots of new first years to our team and went on many fun trips in between our runs, hill workouts, and strength circuits. We drove to Atlantic City, where we did some yoga on the beach and walked along the boardwalk. We went into Philly and got to explore for a day, and we did a long run in Saunders Nature Preserve. We finished off our preseason by racing at Rose Tree Park, where our team came in second overall. In September, the Owls continued to run strong. We kept on training hard and had plenty of long runs at the Wissahickon Park and along the Schuylkill River Trail. We also started working with an awesome new assistant coach, Becca. She joined our other great assistant coach, Katie. Both of them helped to make our season the best that it could be. At the D2 D3 challenge at Kutztown, Dorian Alexis returned from injury, completing her first race in two years and absolutely crushing it. In addition, the team came in second at the Aggies XC Open. At that invite, Hope Jones, after a long period of PT, returned to racing. In October, we kept on training hard in order to prepare for conferences in November. And at conferences, all of our hard work of the season paid off. We came in eighth at conferences, beating McDaniel and Muhlenberg. At regionals later that month, we came 29th in the region out of 49 teams, an improvement of six spots from the regionals in 2018. Out of the conference teams at regionals, we came in seventh, beating Ursinus, McDaniel, and Muhlenberg. As Coach Jason said, this regionals was quite possibly the best team performance of the year. We are so proud of what our team has accomplished this season, and we are so excited to see what next season will bring. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. You have everything to gain. You have everything to gain. Competition is in your DNA. The 2019-2020 Bryn Mawr field hockey season was one to be remembered. Our overall record was 14-4 and 7-3 and and in the conference. We beat all non-conference teams, finishing top 25 in the nation for D3 field hockey. We beat Gettysburg for the first time in the program history in a double overtime game. The score was 3-2. to two. We also beat Washington for the first time in 25 years, beating them 5-0. to zero. We beat Dickinson 1-0 for our first win against them since 1996. And Muhlenberg, we beat 2-1 for our first win against them also since 1996. For the second year in a row, we were the Trico champions, beating Haverford and Swarthmore. This has been Bryn Mawr's best conference record ever, beating all but three teams, which led us to our tie for third in the conference with Ursinus. This has also been our best overall record ever, winning 14 out of our 18 games. We also set program records for wins, Centennial Conference wins, goals, and assists, just to name a few. We also made it to the first round of the Centennial Conference playoffs for the first time in program history. Some of our favorite memories from the season were our preseason tubing trip, beating Dickinson 1-0 this year after losing to them last year, beating Gettysburg for the first time, being Trico champs for the second year in a row, our pre-game and post-game locker room parties, and our luxurious dinner at IHOP. We would also just like to say thank you all so much for the support you've given us in the past and continue to give us. This includes the athletic department, other teams, SAC, faculty, and so many other people that we don't have time to mention in this video. We cannot express how thankful we are and how your belief in us has pushed us to the next level. We'd also like to thank our wonderful coaching staff. This would not have been possible without your hours of commitment to the team, and believing in our potential. So thank you, Victor, Lauren, Sam, and Christy. Last but certainly not least, we'd like to thank our three amazing seniors, Grace, Lydia, and Mary. 
All of you have put in countless hours of hard work and dedication to the team, and without you, the program would not be what it is today. So thank you so much for your passion, devotion, and investment to the team. Go, Go Owls! Owls. Hashtag, Hashtag renew the lease. In 2019, the Burnmar soccer team saw great success, slashing previous records and building upon momentum from the 2018 season, culminating in a final game that was definitely one to remember. I chose Burnmar soccer because of my teammates. Every time I met with the team during my recruiting process, I always felt at home and like I was already a part of the team. To kick off the 2019 campaign, the Owls blazed through non-conference play, putting up a 5-1 record. Offensively, the Owls put 10 in the back of the net, while the defense stood strong, allowing only 6 goals against. Uh, the reason why I chose Brimar Soccer is because when I met everyone, I just felt this sense of being welcome that I hadn't felt anywhere else. And I feel like once I met everyone, everyone was the type of person who I could hang out with on and off the field. And I think most importantly, the team gave me a sense of confidence both on and off the field. And my teammates are always ready to help me with something, whether it's something having to do with academics or what to do during this play um, or drill that we do. So overall, everyone on the team is just so welcoming and I've had a really awesome experience so far. As for the entire season, the Owls scored a total of 17 goals compared to last season's 13 goals, tying the program record for most overall wins in a single season. In addition, the Owls reduced the number of goals scored against by more than 50%. For the first time in program history, the Owls beat Ursinus in their last 2019 season game where senior Kat Baktat scored her first collegiate goal. At the end of the season, the Owls honored four seniors in the class of 2020 whose dedication of countless hours to the team on and off the field will leave a lasting impression for years to come. Unique team culture created by everyone on the team is the main reason I chose Brimar Soccer, but I also picked it because I wanted to be a part of a team that is making program history. I chose Brimar Soccer because of how welcoming everyone was on the team and how it just really felt like a family. And I just really wanted to be a part of a program that was so excited to improve and get better every day. The Owls would like to thank our coaches, Paul, Devin, John, and Chris for their endless dedication to our team. We would also like to thank the Bryn Mawr community for the support that we are given. The Owls are especially grateful for our trainers, Terry and Laura, who keep us safe and healthy throughout the season, as well as Courtney, our strength and conditioning coach, who helps us stay in our best shape mentally and physically. We look forward to drawing on the successes of the past fall to have an even better 2020 season. Go Owls! The 2019-2020 season for the volleyball team was a transitional period. We entered the team with only five returning players and a new head coach. We had four incoming freshmen, and during Customs Week, we were able to recruit three more players. This makes us a very young team with a lot of potential. This season allowed us to focus on growing individually as volleyball players and as a team. We each got stronger in our lifts with Courtney, we improved our ball control with continuous shuttle passing, and our service accuracy increased with repetition. Our record started low in preseason, and towards the end of the season, we were hitting 500 consecutive passes, totaled 88 service aces, and 334 kills, decreasing our total amount of errors from last year's season. With much of the team being first years, we directed a lot of our energy towards building our confidence individually and as a team. Volleyball is such a mental sport and the growth in our confidence allowed us to improve on other aspects of our game. We saw considerable improvements in the connection between players, our communication, as well as our overall energy during games. Some of our favorite memories this season include games that may not have gone perfectly, but where we all had fun playing the sport we love. During our Gettysburg match, we went from a 25-4 loss in the first set to a close 25-22 score in the third. We set our season record for most digs and kills in our match against Rosemont, where we tallied up a total of 92 digs and 37 kills. Our season is not only memorable by what happened on the court, but the time we spent together off it as well. We traveled to Villanova to watch the D1 match of Princeton versus Temple, had a team outing to the Eastern State Penitentiary Haunted House for Halloween, 
and, of course, our team dinners at Chipotle after away games. Nonetheless, an event that we will all remember the most was Senior Day, or Jess Day. That day, we all celebrated Jess's last volleyball game at Bryn Mawr and had a great time concluding our season. When I came to Bryn Mawr, I didn't intend on joining any teams because I was worried about balancing athletics and academics. But as someone who was raised playing a variety of sports, I miss being part of a team. So I chose to join volleyball my sophomore year. What's beautiful about the volleyball team is the wide range of experiences that we have. Some of us have played clubs since we were young and some only played in high school. We're from plenty of different places and we study different subjects, but what we have in common is that we're all here to enjoy a sport that we love and make valuable friendships while we're at it. While I'm sad that my time here is over, I'm happy I made the choice to experience what it's like to be a student athlete at Bryn Mawr. I've watched this team grow on and off the court since last fall and I'm so proud of what we've done. I can't wait to see how they continue to improve in the years to come. Hi everyone, I'm Shuning. I'm one of the co-managers of the badminton team with Ruby. I'm a senior, so this was my first year on the team. Uh, today I want to give a brief summary of our season. We played several matches throughout the season, including friendly ones. Some memorable ones include a match in early December at Haverford, where freshman Queenie Zhang won her debate game in first singles. Captain Megan Kearney and junior Ruby Pritchett also won first doubles in this match. Another memorable game was in early February at Swarthmore, where we played against Swarthmore and Temple. Captain Blossom Zhang won second singles against Temple, the sole win of the day. Our team put up a strong fight in all of our matches, and I'm really proud of all the hard work we put in throughout the season. Here's also us waiting in line for Chipotle after the game. Hi, I'm Grace Wangbo, class of 2022. I'm a sophomore in our badminton team, and today I'm going to give a summary of Mainline Doubles, the biggest tournament of our badminton team. Um, it happened at the end of February, and I'll give you a short summary. Um, Mainline Doubles is a regional badminton tournament that Bryn Mawr badminton team hosts each year. It attracts over 100 participants around the area. It is student run, which means that the leadership team spend a lot of time planning this tournament even before winter break. As the event is our main fundraiser, the team as a whole helped set up and organize the event. It is a way for the team to come together and it concluded our 2019 and 2020 season. I personally think um, Mainline Double is a really good experience for our team to grow because we are able to compete with a lot of people outside our team and in our community area. And we were able to see a lot of professional matches and um, learn a lot of skills out of it as well. And we truly think that this is a unique experience because it's not just a tournament among college students, but also a lot of um, people in different age ranges. There were like little children who were like elementary school until like really old people. So it is a cool experience to have as a team. Um, and this year's mainline doubles, junior Ruby Pratchett and freshman Madeline Marino were runner-ups in the women's doubles rookies division. And Madeline also placed first place in mixed doubles rookies division. Oh, and there's a picture of me uh, with Madeline holding her two trophies. Um, congratulations to Ruby and Madeline and amazing work everybody! Hi, this is Blossom Zhang, one of the co-captains of the badminton team with Megan. I'd like to use this opportunity to thank everybody for helping us complete a successful season. Thank you so much, Zach and RJ are wonderful coaches. And thank you so much, Kathy, Marianne, Travis, Laura, Harry, Katie, 
and Courtney for always supporting us and keeping us healthy. I'd like to also thank my teammates, Megan, Shuning, Ruby, Vera, Grace, Tommy, Madeline, and Queenie. You guys all did wonderful, and I'm really proud of our successful season. Thank you. This season, the Owls featured seniors Brendan, Megan, Odie, and Helena, juniors Lippy, May, and Maya, and first years Lana, Sydney, Ella, and Emma. They were led by Coach Sasha, Coach Becky, Coach Coleman, and Coach Rich. This season, the Owls played with the mindset tougher together. This resulted in the Owls competing in numerous close games and surprising many conference teams. The team focused on building a strong team culture on and off the court by participating in weekly team building activities and setting goals every game that focused on working together. From workouts led by Marines to playing card games, the Owls were there for each other through it all. Despite dealing with injuries, the team worked hard to achieve their goals. The team emphasized playing a strong defense together. This started at practice where they worked hard to learn new sets and were prepared to play new positions. Offensively, everyone was a threat. The Owls approached the season one game at a time and worked hard to implement new offenses and defenses each day. This helped the Owls take a huge win against Trinity over winter break. Led by an experienced senior class and an extremely hard-working first-year class, the Owls displayed what it means to be tougher together. The team also celebrated many individual achievements, including senior Helena's huge 1,000-point accomplishment in December against Gettysburg. She's the seventh person in program history to accomplish this. In a season filled with ups and downs, the Owls had a lot to celebrate. Although the senior class will be missed, the Owls are excited to return next year with seven returning players, as well as an incoming freshman class. They hope to build on their team chemistry and work to achieve new goals together. The Owls are focusing on building their strength and endurance to come back stronger together next year. The 2019-2020 season for the Bryn Mawr swimming team was arguably the best of the century. Highlights of the year included tying a program high seven dual meet wins, most points scored at conference championships since 2010, three new program records in the 200 freestyle relay, 400 medley relay, and the 100 individual medley. After a strong first semester of training as well as some fun team activities, the team traveled to Puerto Rico in the new year for their annual training trip. Getting in the best work of the year amidst earthquakes and power outages. Some serious resiliency was built during that week. Following the start of second semester, the Owls look forward to taper and the end of the year meet for which they had been preparing all year. At the Centennial Conference Championships, senior Becca Elegale and first year Kelly Peterson put the conference on notice by securing two podium spots. Becca secured fifth place with a 44 second drop en route to a personal best in the 1650 freestyle. Kelly also grabbed fifth, moving up a spot from prelims in the 200 butterfly. The 200 freestyle relay team of Ryan Griffin, Varuna Jossodanand, Kelly Peterson, and Maya Schneider broke a record set in 2018, while the 400 medley relay team of Maya Schneider, Hannah Soyson, Emmy Wise, and Kelly Peterson broke the mark set in 2016 by over a second. Everyone contributed to the strong effort in the pool, as well as to the energy on deck, making it such a successful meet for everyone. In addition to 12 new all-time top 10 individual Bryn Mawr performances, 36 lifetime bests by 18 swimmers, and countless season best times were swum. On top of the work in the pool, the team was once again named the CSCAA Scholar All-America Team, hosting one of the top team GPAs in Division Three. And thank you to our coaches, Pat, Matt, Ryan, and Caroline, for all of the hard work that they put into the season as well.
had a very exciting indoor track season, which included a trip to New York City to compete in the Division Three Invitational at the Armory. And let me tell you, that was an absolute blast. Um, over the course of the season, our team broke three school records. Uh, the relay team of Anna Kyle, Carrie Parker, Jenna Kateri, and Cass Wojcik uh, broke the school record in the sprint medley relay. Um, Jenna Kateri broke the school record for the 60 hurdles, and Margaret Hardig broke the high jump. It was part of the sprint medley relay um, back in December, and we ran at Ocean Breeze Track on Staten Island, which is really fun. It's a great track to run at. Um, and it was a lot of fun to set the school record with a team. Um, so I ran the 800 meter leg of the SMR and it was really fun. Conference championships were very eventful this year. Um, as a whole, our team placed seventh, beating out McDaniel, Gettysburg, and Franklin and Marshall, which is the best performance we've had at championships in over a decade. Um, First year Margaret Hardig, as well as seniors Lydia Fisher and Lexi Bucci all qualified for conferences, although this is the first year on the team for all three of them. Anna Kyle placed seventh in the mile, Cass Wojcik placed fourth in the 400 meter and first in the 200 meter, and Jenna Kateri placed second in the 60 dash and first in the 60 hurdle, and with this performance qualified for nationals. crew memory was from freshman year. The first week of practices, our assistant coach made all of the novices do a workout running up and down the stairs between the gym and Brecken. To this day, it is one of the hardest workouts I have ever done, and it's been four years. One of my favorite memories from crew was the petite final that we got first in at Marks last year because even though we didn't do as well as you wanted to in the semifinal, it was really great to come together. Okay, so my favorite things about crew, um, oh, I loved the team breakfast. Another memory was that at practice, we weren't the only ones on the water. There was a dog that was swimming in front of us, and luckily it made it to the other side of the river, but it was just a cool experience. My favorite part about being on the crew team and what I was most looking forward to this season was the spring break trip. And it's really where the team bonds on and off the water and where we are able to row against other teams not in our conference. So the trip is still a lot, a lot of fun, but it's also competitive. It stands out for me personally aren't the medal ceremonies, the personal records or anything like that. It's more the sense of camaraderie that you get from waking up at 5 a.m. in the morning, of seeing people early at the van saying hi, of putting boats on the trailer at 6.30 a.m. for a race on the next day, of having to get up in the driving wind and racing down the race course, and of also of cheering your teammates on, of that feeling of knowing that the people you love and care for are on the bank watching you race and that you are going across the finish line for them. It has been an honor and a pleasure to see how my teammates have grown.
Bryn Mawr Lacrosse Owls has a roster size of 29 players and four coaches. Our dedicated coaching staff includes Marianne Chiller, Mitchie Ellers, Caroline Mitchell, and Kelly Corbett. Our captains were senior Liz Hu and juniors Alicia Edmond and Kylie Wu. We had two seniors, five juniors, 10 sophomores, and 12 freshmen. Our players hail from all corners of the country, including places like Maine, California, and Florida. Each player contributed to the team in their own way, whether it was coming up with an amazing ground ball, scoring in the game, pushing each other in practice, or making their teammates smile. Despite the sudden end to the season, the women's lacrosse team finished 6-0, the best ever start in program history. The team tallied a total of 108 goals, 49 assists, 108 draw controls, averaged 18 goals per game, and made a combined 173 shots on goal, finishing with a 51.4% shooting percentage. The 49 assists this season sit at number two for most assists ever in Bryn Mawr history. On the defensive end, the team picked up a total of 114 ground balls, caused 77 turnovers, and had an impressive 45.1% save percentage from our fellow All-Stars guarding the net. Four of the Owls' 2020 games added to the record books for most points in a single game, with Cedar Crest tying last year's Gwynedd Mercy game at 33 points in the top slot. Three of the 2020 games have also captured the record books for most team goals and assists in a single game. Bryn Mawr ranks 11th nationally for points per game and draw controls per game. The team finished number one in the conference and was one of 35 teams in Division III to remain undefeated. Even better, the lacrosse team finished fifth in the country in scoring margin and seventh in the country in defense. Some NCAA stats we'd like to highlight are Rebecca Long, Sloane Johnson, May Gaucher, Isabel Shin, and Kylie Wu each finished the season with double-digit total scores. Our nationally ranked individuals include Isabel Shin in the top 100 for assists, Jenna Van Holten and Sierra Hamilton for draw controls per game, Isabel Shin and Kylie Wu for points, Sloane Johnson for goals, Jessica Callaway finished 16th in goals against average, Sloane Johnson and Sierra Hamilton in three position percentage, and Maeve Donnelly for shot percentage at 90%. Finally, 10 players from Bryn Mawr came in for the top goal scorers, assists, and points in the Centennial Conference, which include players previously mentioned, as well as Maya DeFrisha, Nino Hori, and Paige Britton. Multiple school records were achieved this year, including Kylie and Sierra both contributed game-winning goals with three each. Sloan also joined Sierra in game-winning goals for a single season. Jenna broke the record for most draw controls in a single game with 16 against Rosemont. Isabel, Meg, and Becca each recorded four assists in a single game. Isabel, Kylie, and Sierra in their top three position goals. Jess also sits in many record slots, including saves per game, goals against average, and most wins. We'd like to take a moment to thank the rest of our athletics department that supported us off the field, and without them, our success would not be possible. With special shout-outs to Laura, Terry, Paige, Courtney, Maddie, and Travis. Thank you to our seniors, Colleen and Liz, for your dedication these past four years and helping build this program from only 13 players to what it is today. Even though your senior season was cut short, you'll always hold a special place on this program and on our team. We look forward to seeing you at future alumni games. Good luck in all your future endeavors. We love you. We would like to give a shout out to teammates Sydney and Marina for stepping up as leaders and contributing their lax IQ to the team. We can't wait to have you back on the field. A special thank you to all our coaches, especially our interim head coach, Marianne, for guiding us through this record-breaking season. Congratulations to our head coach, Kelly Corbett, for having a healthy baby girl, Jane. We look forward to seeing you back on the field next season. This spring season, Bryn Mawr Tennis has not lost a single match, a first in school history. The team holds a winning 2-1 to record from the fall season with outstanding performances by each member. Bryn Mawr triumphed over Shippensburg with an 8-1 win to kick off the fall season. A victory from Horvatus and Hemp followed by another win by first doubles pair, Camacho and Corman. On the single side, Bryn Mawr topped Shippensburg with an easy five wins to one. Although the Owls suffered a close four to five loss for Immaculata, they bounced back to take on Arcadia, winning seven to two to close out the fall season. Dominant performances by second double pair, Horvatus and Corman, 
as well as third doubles pair Zhu and Karamaza, helped to secure the lead, neither losing a single set. Strong performances from Camacho, Corman, Hemp, Karamaza, and Zhu all resulted in singles wins. Although the Owls lost a few team members for the spring, the future still looks bright. The team has become a strong unit and improves every day at practice. We want to thank our lone senior, Fran, for being a great role model of hard work and commitment. We are sorry your senior season ended before it even started, but we appreciate the three years of hard work you have given to BMC Tennis. Also, a huge thank you to Coach Wang for always putting extra hours in for us to practice hitting, as well as being so supportive and motivating when we need it most. This season did not go as planned, but it has brought so much more motivation to get back onto the court next season. Although we are undefeated this spring season, we look forward to more competition next fall as we step back onto the court. Hi, I'm Emily Darrow. I'm one of the current captains of the outdoor track team, and I'm here to tell you kind of what our season would have looked like this year. Our season was looking to be very strong as we had about a 32 member or so squad, so we are looking to be pretty big compared to prior years. We also added four new members to our team. We added uh, AZ Revglia from <coughs> soccer, so that was very cool. We also added Emma Samstein, Daisy Gadsby, and Sydney Collins, also for, uh, from other sports. Exciting for our throws squad. I think we're going to have about six members there, so we're really going to be fielding a strong fields events team. We also have some uh, new steeplechasers. So freshman Marion Richardson from the distance side was going to come in as a steeplechaser, and so is uh, possibly Carrie Parker, which is going to be good to have some new people learning the event since our top st uh, current steeplechasers, An Anna Kyle, is about to graduate. So that was going to be pretty exciting. In addition to that, during our indoor season at conferences, we are about seven points difference from Haverford, and not including our relay teams. So with a stronger squad in the field events and um, overall in as a team, I think we would have had um, a much closer shot this year. So who knows what would have happened there, but that was definitely would have been an exciting thing to kind of watch throughout the season, especially with them being such a competitive conference team. Um, just had like a very large distance squad this year. We have over 20 members of the distance squad. So we really would have filled those events a lot more than usual, which can always put us into scoring positions. Um, you know, we can score from first to eighth. So having enough distance runners to be able to kind of competitively try and get there was very exciting to look at. So I think overall our season would have looked very strong. In outdoor, I was looking forward to um, running steeplechase which is my favorite event and I was really excited about having like one more season of it. Um, and my favorite outdoor memory is probably May Day. Um, it's always really fun when we get dressed up for May Day and wear like wear our white dresses and uh, make flower crowns on the track. So it's, it's a lot of fun. In my past outdoor seasons, I've really enjoyed going to the meets and supporting my teammates. It's been really fun to watch them grow and especially to watch the people run the steeple chase, the 5k and the 10k and sometimes the mile because they're very interesting, long but competitive races and it's really exciting to see how they span out over the course of the race and to cheer for my teammates racing in them. Hi, I'm Izzy and I won the push-up challenge. It came the first week we were stuck at home and 
It was a week long challenge where we had to do as many push ups as we could, and then periodically throughout the week we posted our totals. It was a really fun way to push each other from afar and just kind of still feel connected to the team, even though we're all stuck at home. So it was a good time. Hi everyone, I'm here to present the sixth annual Strength and Conditioning Award, which we have also named the Challenge Accepted Award. When developing the description and criteria for this award, I wanted to be able to honor athletes who were not necessarily the fastest or the strongest, but athletes who worked hard and pushed their own personal boundaries to achieve new levels of personal potential. In the weight room, as on the court, on the field, or in the pool, we work out as a team. And it is in this context that you have the opportunity to be accountable to your team and to yourself to become the best possible version of you that you can be. This award is meant to honor a senior who has worked hard for their own training purposes, who consistently motivates and supports the entire group during each training session, and who demonstrates the culture of the Courtney workout with enthusiasm, determination, and a positive attitude. This year, as it was last year, is a story about resilience and determination of spirit. It is a story about meeting adversity, taking some hard hits, literally, and being able to pivot and find new meaning and a new focus. This year's award recipient was sidelined with multiple concussions that affected her in every way you could imagine, athletically, academically, and ultimately requiring her to step aside from being a competitive soccer player. But if you know Lexi Bucci, you know it was simply unacceptable for her to be removed entirely from athletics. Spending the time she needed in order to get healthy, she found a new love of sport with the track and field team and achieved personal successes every weekend of competition. In addition, Lexi dedicated herself to hard work in the weight room. And while this award is not necessarily about being the strongest athlete, Lexi shows up every day with the drive and desire to make her mark. She currently holds spots on three out of our six record-setting lifts, holding the top spot in two of these. And if we were still training on campus right now, I can guarantee she would find her name in every column. Selfishly, it is this part of Lexi's athletic career at Bryn Mawr that makes me the proudest. Her devotion to time spent in the weight room, interest in the intricacies and specifics of Olympic and powerlifting, and her innate awareness of form and technique make her a joy to coach. And the extra time she spent this winter with Maddie and me to practice and to learn demonstrated to me she could step into strength and conditioning as a career if she wanted to. And I would be honored one day to call her my colleague. In recognition of the consistent demonstration of hard work, dedication, spirit, motivation, and grit throughout all seasons of training, and for the fierce acceptance of every challenge. It is my honor to present this year's Challenge Accepted Award 
to Alexis Bucci. The Ray Award is given in memory of Ray Theron, coach and instructor in physical education, and was first presented in 1994. Historically, it is awarded to the student who shows spirit, enthusiasm, and supports many athletic teams. Faculty and staff members of the Bryn Mawr community are also eligible for the award. This year's recipient has shown tremendous support to many athletic teams, and her spirit for Bryn Mawr athletics has always been big and bright. She is 100% committed to her own team and providing support, encouragement, and enthusiasm, but to other athletes and teams as well, where she would attend as many games, competitions, and races as possible to be there for our Owls and she was the biggest fan of our entire department. She says hello to every coach, wishing them luck or congratulating them on their team's performance. She would spend hours in the training room talking to Terry and Laura, laughing to the point where I could hear it from my office. She even imprinted her spirit on patience, the training room ghost. Terry said this about her. She was her own toughest critic and hardly ever saw the good of her own game, but she saw only the positives in others' abilities and contributions. She supported every other team, even attending tennis and badminton matches. She willed herself to be positive when faced with great difficulties. She's someone who puts others first. She would have frequent meetings with our athletic director, Kathy Tierney, to discuss a variety of topics, but mainly the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion in Bryn Mawr athletics. I think that is why she's so deserving of this award. As much support that she showed for our athletes and coaches, her spirit really shined outside of competitions by fighting and advocating for ways that our department could be more diverse and inclusive. The position of head of diversity and inclusion would not have been made if it wasn't for a couple of her teammates, Brendan Harrison and Sydney Garner. They were the driving force for this position and built the platform for this year's recipient to build off of their efforts. In the first semester, she also had help from her co-heads, Jacqueline Fernandez and Sarah Gu. Then took full control in the spring, spearheading the planning and coordinating of several events on campus where SAC would join with other student-run groups, specifically the In Living Black event for Black History Month. She also worked alongside Kathy to secure a speaker to campus in the spring, Nevin Kappel, whose transformative work would have allowed spaces for our student athletes to define their roles as inclusive leaders and have engaging and meaningful dialogue across differences. Unfortunately, this event had, to be, event had to be postponed, but when it does happen, it will have a lasting impact on Bryn Mawr athletics. Many of our student athletes fight for diversity, equity, and inclusion, and support all of our teams, but this year's recipient would go above and beyond as her role of head of diversity and inclusion, beyond her role as a teammate, and beyond her role as a member of the Bryn Mawr community. All of that together is what sets her apart. It was an honor to have coached her and worked alongside her in SAC. And I'm thrilled to announce this year's Ray Theron winner, Megan Murray Bruce. Congratulations, Megan, and thank you for everything you have done. The Jaeger Cup is given in honor of Janet Jaeger, an instructor in physical education at Bryn Mawr for over 30 years. First awarded in 1982, the Jaeger Cup is presented to the individual who has given exceptional service to the athletic department. This award can be given to a student and or a member of the Bryn Mawr community. This year's recipient provided exceptional service to the athletic department for four years. There are certain expectations that you are supposed to meet if you work for the department, but she would surpass those and was always willing to give more. She never complained about her responsibilities. In fact, she truly enjoyed the service she did. She was always respectful, worked hard, and was efficient. She understood how her jobs affected other student athletes, opposing teams, coaches, officials, and parents. She was always willing to pick up extra shifts and recruit more student workers when the department was in need. One of her supervisors, Katie Tarr, had this to say about her. She was a rock star student worker, reliable and trustworthy. Most importantly, she took her job of game setup and event worker seriously and helped Bryn Mawr Athletics put on a great product. She enjoyed supporting her fellow athletes. I will miss game setup with her. She did it with a smile and sense of humor. She was a pretty good gator driver too. I couldn't agree more with all of that. 
Except I would say definitely put on your seatbelt. This girl has a heavy foot. I remember times that she would help set up the field for field hockey, then attend practice, and then go back to work to run balls, work with Travis, or clean up the field. She was everywhere. Communications director Travis Galaska said he will miss her appreciation and amazement whenever a player from either team made a particularly impressive play. And I'll always remember her laugh and smile as she did her job. She embodied this perfect student worker and was a pleasure to work with. In the fitness center, you were always greeted with a hello and some cool music when it was her shift. She would ask you how you were doing and have a conversation. Courtney Morris said, she always has a smile on her face, always happy to chat with me and would take on any project I gave her, no matter what it was. She always recognized how much work I put into everything that I did and could always make me feel good and happy. Bottom line is that this recipient enjoyed the service she did for the department. People enjoyed working with her, knowing that the work would get done and it would be fun. We appreciate every hour you committed to working for Bryn Mawr Athletics. You set the bar high and it won't be the same without you. You are an outstanding representative for Bryn Mawr Athletics. I'm thrilled to announce this year's Jaeger Cup goes to Odenaka Oranaku. Congratulations, Odie. Thank you for all of your service as an owl. First off, I'd like to give a big shout out to the field hockey senior class of 2020. Mary Cugini, Lydia Fisher, and Grace Morris. What you've accomplished on the field almost never happens in Division Three sport. Only two field hockey teams that ended your freshman season outside the top half of Division Three ended up in the top 20% at any point in their college career, and you helped to lead one of them. Only four teams in any fall or winter ball sport that ended your freshman season outside the top 70% of Division Three ended your senior season in the top 20%, and you helped to lead one of them. I applaud you. I'm proud of how you've worked and grown over the past four years, and you've had a transformational impact on the program and in our athletic department. We'll keep it going. I'm very excited to announce that this year's recipient of the Schillingford Award is Mary Cugini. For the past 20 years, the Schillingford Award has been presented to a member of the senior class who has demonstrated athletic excellence, sportsmanship, and leadership. Jen Schillingford is one of the matriarchs of field hockey in the United States and at Bryn Mawr, so it's a great privilege to present the award this year to one of our tri-captains on the winningest hockey team in our history. There are so many moments in your career that captured these qualities, Mary helping up opponents after a 50-50 collision, game-winning goals against Elmira, Gettysburg, or Muhlenberg, assists against Swarthmore, the performance against Haverford these past two years, what you've added to the program as a captain. One game really has stood out to me, your last game sophomore season. We lost three nothing to Ursinus, another pretty competitive performance in a pretty competitive season. But it was three days after Seth Terrell had gashed open your knee when we played Haverford. You had some too high number of stitches in your knee, and you played 61 minutes, and you played your tail off. You were barely able to walk the, off the field after the game, and you were on crutches afterwards. A big part of sportsmanship is raising the play of others by being your best self. And you consistently did that, both for your teammates and for opponents. You are tough, Mary, and you are resilient and you are strong. Fiercely competitive on the field, compelled to win, willing to leave everything out there, every time. You have shed blood, tears, and plenty of sweat for this team. Probably too much blood, to be honest. I looked up the origins of that phrase, blood and sweat and tears. Winston Churchill said it early during World War II. Actually, there are a lot of military uses throughout history. I prefer a more artistic one. Lord Alfred Douglas in 1919. Good poetry is forged slowly and patiently, link by link, 
with blood and sweat and tears. No, your tool wasn't ink, nor your canvas a paper, but good field hockey is beautiful artwork too. You have forged your game link by link and taken ownership for your growth. You have literally practiced in forests, planned road trips and vacations around available tracks and turfs, taught your nephew Patrick how to hold a stick and be your passing partner. You have transformed yourself as an athlete and as a leader, and in your confidence too. For all your athletic accomplishments, and they were well earned, you have also been a water carrier. You sought out honest mirrors. You asked your teammates for honest feedback, how you could serve them better and better as a captain, and you worked to adjust. To be so vulnerable to peers is hard, and it is a sign of a real leader, in my opinion. I really respect you for it. We've watched you grow from the super energetic, full of potential first year who was just, to quote the first text you ever sent me, so stoked to be on the team. And maybe still wondering just a little bit, do I belong as a college level field hockey player? To a three-year captain, a dynamic midfielder with a beauty to her game, and one of the most accomplished players in our storied program's history first team all centennial, and all region. Let me be crystal clear, Mary. You belong. Not because of the awards, and, and those are no mistake. Not because of the stats, but because of what you did that earned them, link by link, and what you did to help transform this program. You belong, Mary, and I'm very glad I've gotten to watch your performance and your growth firsthand these past four years. Congratulations. At its inception, the Delano Award was the most prestigious award given by the Athletics Department. Given in honor of the former Athletic Director Ann Lee Delano, this award is presented to an outstanding senior scholar athlete who exhibits scholarship requiring a minimum 3.5 GPA, athletics excellence demonstrating outstanding prowess on the athletic field, and college service offering service to the community. Anna Kyle arrived at Bryn Mawr as part of one of the deepest distance classes in the history of the college. Even amongst her peers, she stood out as a runner to watch over the next four years. Shortly after being elected captain during the spring of her sophomore year, Anna would capstone a successful season with her first sub-19 5K at the Swarthmore Last Chance Meet. She would return a year later to set her 5K PR at 18.10.55. As captain, Anna has helped usher in a resurgence of distance prowess as the team again looks to climb the ranks of the Centennial Conference. Whether it's mastering the next Courtney workout in the weight room or leading the team through the next grueling Honey Badger workouts that lasted long after sunset, Anna's can-do attitude is infectious and has helped shape the next generations of distance runners here at Bryn Mawr. On the track, Anna's specialty is the steeplechase, a brutal three-kilometer race featuring 35 barriers and water. Tackling the most painful track and field event is an accomplishment in and of itself, but it's Anna's range that really sets her apart from her peers. Anna made her mark on the record books this past winter, anchoring the sprint medley relay team to a school record time of 4.30. Her mark extends beyond the school record board as she shows up on many of the top 10 all-time lists as well, including in cross-country, 7th on the all-time 6K list, in track and field, 5th on the all-time 5K list, 4th on the all-time 10K list, 3rd on the all-time mile list, and 3rd on the all-time steeplechase list, making her one of the most accomplished distance runners in the history of our program. Please join me in congratulating Anna Kyle, the 2020 Ann Lee Delano Award winner. Congratulations, Anna. Great job. Congratulations, Anna, and good luck on your next adventure. You have nothing to fear. You have nothing to fear. You have everything to gain. You have everything to gain. Competition is in your DNA. Competition is in your DNA. Success is in your DNA.
Good evening. Thanks for watching tonight's show. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I miss seeing you all in Great Hall and can't wait for us to connect again soon. Tonight we honor and celebrate the Bryn Mawr student athlete and the many accomplishments of this past year. I love listening to the team season summaries and thinking back on an amazing year. The individual achievements and team successes of this year were exciting and offer a vision of future success for Bryn Mawr Athletics. The wins and record-breaking performances tell only a part of the story of what makes Bryn Mawr athletes so special. The full story of the Bryn Mawr student athlete is seen in the support and encouragement you show each other, the grit and determination you exhibit when competing, the commitment and toughness you have in preparing for your season, and the joy and passion you have for your sport, your team, and Bryn Mawr. We are proud of each of you and grateful for the opportunity to work with you. I would also like to thank our head and assistant coaches for their commitment to our student athletes and their leadership and support. To our staff who work tirelessly to support our athletes, thanks for all that you do. I would also like to thank the college community for the many ways you support our athletes, teams, and coaches. Tonight's show was produced by Travis Galaska and ja Jackie Stevens. Thanks to them for pulling this together and for all they do to celebrate our amazing athletes and coaches throughout the year. The show would not have come together without the efforts of Carly Hansen. Thanks, Carly, for all that you did to make this celebration possible. The SAC had an amazing year advocating and celebrating the Bryn Mawr student athlete. It was through their efforts that a stronger community of athletes developed. The leadership and vision of Brendan Harrison and Sydney Gardner SAC co-presidents set the tone for an inclusive space in which all athletes were celebrated and honored. We will miss them both for their steady leadership and unselfish dedication to their classmates and teammates. I also want to give a big shout out to the SAC executive board for all that they did to make this year a special one. We are living in unprecedented times that impact so much of the familiar and routine. Some of our students are facing enormous hardships throughout this crisis. I wish all of our students peace and opportunity to move beyond the difficulty of this moment. I want to also speak directly to our seniors and acknowledge the range of things you are feeling. Tonight we are taking a moment to celebrate every senior student athlete and the contributions they have made to their teams in Bryn Mawr Athletics. You have led the way when the path was not yet defined you provided leadership and confidence when others doubted the strength and ability of the Bryn Mawr athlete. And you made sacrifices for your teammates and coaches throughout your time as an owl. When it is safe to have us all return to campus, we will gather and celebrate you, your many accomplishments and legacy to Bryn Mawr Athletics. Until then, I personally want to thank you for all that you have taught us and shared with us. Thank you. Please stick around through the credits to hear some of the comments from our seniors. Thanks again. One of my favorite Bryn Mawr athletic memories was doing long runs at the WIS with my team. Um, the WIS is always really pretty and we would often play music there and it was always just really fun and relaxing even to go on those long runs there with them. Four years of swimming has taught me that I can never pack enough snacks for meats. Even Pat can't wake me up for morning practice, and that above all else, the swim team is my family. I'm so sad to be saying goodbye, but just know that I love each and every one of you. Swimming at Bryn Mawr has helped me to form the best lifelong friendships with so many of my teammates, and I'm really grateful for all of the bonds that I've also made with my coaches. It's something that I'm really going to miss. I'm going to miss having my teammates around all the time, my best friends around, and just that atmosphere on deck is something that can never be replicated. Being a four-year athlete, I learned a lot and received so much support from my teammates, coaches, and faculty in the athletic department. The memories and skills I gained from being on a team are precious. I want to give a big thank you to everyone I met here. I am so glad that I got to spend my four years here at Bryn Mawr College as a student athlete. I'd like to thank everybody on our badminton team, from our coaches to my teammates. Uh, thank you so much and I hope to see you guys soon. 
My favorite Bimmer Athletics memory is from my sophomore year. It was the first race of the year, it was super hot, and we had a crazy hilly course, and it was hard, but it was the first race I ever placed in, and so I got a t-shirt, and it was really cool. Um, so I just want to say thank you to everybody in the department, all my teammates and my coach, I'll see you guys later. Thank you to my teammates, friends, coaches, and the entire athletic staff for supporting me through these past four years, especially my teammates. It's a privilege to be able to compete at this level. It's an even greater privilege to be able to do it with you guys. I'm so proud of you and I can't wait to see what you accomplish in the future. My favorite moment was definitely watching uh, field hockey in the Central Inter Conference playoffs. That was pretty incredible. Uh, I think it's all my teammates over the years. Uh, I think it's all the faculty of the athletic department. And it was an honor representing Bryn Mawr on the court. Uh, let's go Owls. Hey everyone, I just wanted to say thank you to the entire Bryn Mawr athletics community, especially my teammates for making the last four years so special. I'm really thankful I got to share it with you. Hi, my name's Liz Hu and I'm a senior on the lacrosse team. My favorite athletic memory was this season, our last game, we were able to road trip down to CE to Crest and we have an amazing win. I'm so grateful for my team and everything athletics have given me. Thanks. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of my coaches, Terry and Laura, to Courtney, to Travis, and all of my wonderful teammates for encouraging me, for guiding me, for pushing me, for giving me the opportunity to do something that I've loved every single day. Um, I know I'm leaving my time here not only as a better athlete, but as a better person and with friends I know I'm going to have for the rest of my life. I'm really grateful. Some of my favorite memories from my time at Bryn Mawr are times that I spent with the tennis team, um, on the bus, at matches, and team meals. So thank you so much to my team and my coach and Bryn Mawr Athletics for playing such an important part in my Bryn Mawr experience. Hi Bryn Mawr, I wanted to say a big thank you to all the athletic staff and faculty, to all my teammates, the returners on the field hockey team. I'm so proud of each and every one of you and I can't wait to see how far you go into the future. And a special thanks to Mary and Lydia for pushing out four tough yet successful years together. Hello everyone. I want to thank the Vermont Athletics Department for these last four years and for giving me a community full of support and friendships that I will treasure forever. Hey Owls, I would like to give a very special shout out to my volleyball team. I am so grateful for the memories that we've made together and the bonds that we've formed. And as much as I'm going to miss you guys, I can't wait to see what's in store for you in the coming seasons. Sending all of my love. Stay safe everyone.